Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today to do my check-in for my Project Apocalypse. So what I'm doing this year is I am trying to test out hopefully all of my lip products um, and then do a deep clutter. So I'm wearing them all throughout a month. I'm usually doing themed months. Um, and then at the end of the month, I show you how they look on the lips, what I think about them. I give you mini reviews and I ultimately tell you, am I keeping it or not? Now I do have probably over 500 lip products and my goal is to get rid of at least half of them this year. So we're nearly towards the end of the year, but I've still got a lot to go. Um, but this month I decided to tackle my lip stains. Now, the reason why I thought to do this, well, firstly, I have been putting this off for the longest time because uh, if you've watched one of, the, one of these videos before, you'll know that the way that I often review and take photos of products is if I have if I have the same product in multiple shades, so like multiple shades of the same product, what I tend to do is I sit down, I um, apply them all, I take photos, and then I'll choose the ones I want to test out. Um, and I'll just decide based on the formula and also the colors, which ones I want to keep. So I don't do like day long wear tests of every shade if I've got multiples of the same formula. Um, the problem with a stain you can't do multiple products in a day because the product stains. So I couldn't sit down and swatch all of these in one or two sittings because they stain. So the color carries over to the next shade. Um, but also I there were only a couple of days where I could review a couple of lip products in the same day. Past months, I've gone through like 40 odd lip products because I can wear like a lip gloss in the morning and then in the afternoon test out a lipstick. I couldn't do that with lip stains. So this was pretty much one product a day all month. So I've got 31 lip stains that I'm testing um, and I've just finished trying them all out. So even though I was dreading doing this process because I knew it was going to take a long time and require a lot of patience, uh, even more so than other months, I was also really looking forward to doing this month because uh, currently in Melbourne, we're still in lockdown. We're currently the world's most locked down city. We've just beat that record. Hooray. I think we're currently at like 240 something days of lockdown in total since the pandemic started. So uh, yeah, so pretty much not only are we home a lot, but we have to wear masks whenever we leave the house. And I've heard from a lot of people that watch this series that wearing lip products has been really difficult because of the pandemic. Um, so, and I totally agree. But if you do want to wear a bright lip color, a lip stain, is fantastic. Most of the time, these do not transfer onto masks at all. The only time I had some transferring was when I was using some of the formulas that were a little bit more moisturizing, or if um, I like put a lip balm over the top and that sort of um, disrupted the set lip stain and then it would transfer onto a mask. But lip stains are so good for mask wearers. You can pretty much put a mask over what I'm wearing now, which is transfer proof transfer proof um, and it wouldn't leave a mark at all. However, a little asterisk to that is when they do transfer onto your mask, they can stain a little bit because they're lip stains, but after a few washes, they'll wash out. So yeah, I love this month. I pretty much almost exclusively wore bright lips or red lips every single day and wearing a mask really had no impact on that. So if you have been really missing wearing a bright lip, I highly encourage you to try a good lip stain because a good lip stain, oh. In the past, I've spoken about lip stains like so many times on my channel and so many times to personal friends and so many times to subscribers about how much I love them. Um, but this month really solidified how fantastic they are, especially in a pandemic. All right, so one thing you'll notice from my lip stain collection, and I'm sure I've got a couple of other ones floating around that I totally missed, um, but one thing you'll notice is there's a particular brand that I love the most, and it's Tony Moly. Now, I've tried more lip stains than this in the past, and I've decluttered some that just don't work. Tony Moly, for me, have been the best. So my favorite historically has always been the shocking lips, like the perfect lip 
shocking stains, um, which have more of a glossy effect, um, but they're super, super pigmented. More recently, they brought out five shades of the shocking lip blur. So these have more of a matte finish, but they're still supposed to be really intense. Um, and then I also have quite a few of some of their older lip stains, which I believe they might've discontinued, um, but I've got the uh, Lip Tone Get It tint in the velvets, which are again the matte finish, um, and the lip tone get it tints, which are just the sort of more hydrating, more jelly looking uh, stains. So I have a lot of these. I've bought a whole bunch of shades. I mainly bought these ones when they're on sale. So I even chose shades that I didn't think I'd really like. So I have quite an extensive range of Tony Moly lip stains. So this video is predominantly Tony Moly lip stains, but uh, in my opinion, they're the best and this month has just solidified that. Now what I also did was I chose to test the shocking lip stains last. Um, the reason I did that was because I know that just historically they've always been my favorite. I like a bold stain. I know there's people out there that like a bit of a sheer washer color. They want just a little tint to the lips, like a little flush. I want like a bold lip that stains and lasts all day. So I always gravitate towards the ones that are long wearing, very, very pigmented um, and that look opaque on the lips. So I decided to test those last, knowing that if I tested them first, it would probably taint the way I feel about the other ones, if that makes sense. So what I'm actually going to start with is uh, the other brands that I own. Um, these are some that I picked up while I was in Japan and I was hoping I was going to love them because I actually like swatched them in store and picked them out in store and was hoping they'd great, be great. I can tell you that these are not good. These, for one, I don't think are stains and these are horrible, horrible, horrible stains. So these are both from a chewed house. We've got the Dear Darling Tints. So I've got the shade BR401 and BK801. So what I said about the BR401, which I think is a brown tone shade, I said this is a sad stain. I said, this is what I remember stains being like in the early 2000s from Western brands. It's sheer, it's patchy, it wears off unevenly, it's just sad. The shade is a nice blood red shade, but it really doesn't cut it for a stain. And then when I get into the BK401, which again is a really cool shade, it's like a blackened cherry shade, this is horrible. This applies streaky and sheer and when you press your lips together it lifts apart and looks patchy. I couldn't wear these. I pretty much applied them, tested them out and wiped them off. Um, they do stain a little bit. So like the black one for example has a faint berry stain. What was unfortunate actually about these was um, I used these on a day where I actually had a little uh, micro sort of scratch on my lip and it just emphasized the scratch. It didn't do anything but that. It just emphasized the lip issues that I had. These were horrible. They're going straight in the bin after I take a thumbnail. The next two products are Lip Rich Vivid Tints. Now these are less of your traditional stain. I included them in the stain category because they're called tints. So it's supposed to tint your lips like a stain. Now I have the shade BR401 and the shade RD301. So a brown tone and a red tone. So what I said about this was that it's not a traditional stain or tint. It's much thicker and glossy, almost like a liquid lipstick that never sets down. This is a type of product that has a really high risk of smearing and smudging and getting on your teeth, um, which is exactly what you don't want from a stain. What I like from a stain is they set down, they stain your lips and they don't move and budge. So that was the complete opposite of what these were. I did mention that these do stain a tiny bit. So once you do wipe them off, there's a little bit of color there, um, but I just don't like the texture of them. It's not something I would reach for over a traditional liquid lipstick. This particular shade is like a burnt orange shade. It's quite pretty, but again, I have this time and time again in a liquid lipstick and I'd much prefer to reach for those. The red one is a bit different. Um, it's the same consistency, but the shade is really, really pretty. Now I was umming and ahhing about this. I was like, oh, it's like a blood red. I really love a blood red. I think they're really flattering. Um, and this did settle down and tend to wear fairly okay throughout the day. But again, this is not what I want from a lip tint. Um, it's just like a glossy liquid lipstick. And I have something like this in the Alice Farce uh, formula that I reviewed 
in this series a couple of months ago, um, similar shade, and I just would prefer to reach for that over this. All right, the next brand that I'm gonna review is by Chateau Labiotte. Now, these are the wine lip tints. Now, what makes these cute is they're like little wine bottles. They're very cute. These I would be tempted to keep just for display purposes because they legitimately look like a little bottle of wine and you have like red wine and you have white wine and it's kind of cute. So I've got three shades. I've got more of an orange shade. This is OR01. I have a rosy pink shade, which is CR02. And I have more of a peachy brown nude shade, which is BE01. Now I don't understand why brands put nude shades in, in stain ranges because nude colors don't stain, so it's not a stain. Um, but if you happen to like this formula and it really reacts well with your lip chemistry, um, having a nude uh, in that same formula might work really well for you, but it does not stain. Let's just put it out there. The nude, very pretty on the lips, does not stain. Now the formula of these, in my opinion, tend to be quite standard when it comes to like lip stains. They're quite reminiscent of the original Tony Molly uh, Lip Tone Get It Tint. That's what it's called. Yeah, what a weird name. They tend to not be matte. They're not too shiny. They're sort of just in the middle. They work fine, but there's nothing like mind blowing about them. Now the first shade, the orange one, I said it's a beautiful orange toned red. Um, you know, definitely my favorite tone of stain. Um, but this one just didn't last as well as some of the other ones I have in the same shade. I did notice that there was some pretty obvious um, wearing down in certain areas, like after you have a cup of tea or something, like where the rim sort of hits your lips, starts to wear down a little bit unevenly. So it didn't stay opaque throughout the day. And even though this did wear like a solid, maybe like six, six and a half hours, um, I have lip stains that last better than that. So now I'm not gonna keep this orange one because again, I've got better things. Um, and the only reason I would consider keeping it is because of the bottle, but I might keep the other two for that reason. I don't need three. Now this rosy pink shade, so CR02, was very, very different from the first. It was a lot sheerer. This is like a little wash. It's like a little hint of color. Like when you put it on, it's just like a little hint of color. It's almost like a watercolor wash of color, which is some people love from a stain. Again, it's not something that I, I don't buy a stain for this sort of opacity, um, but it was a very pretty look and the pink was quite nice and flattering. This pretty much wore off in a couple of hours after I had lunch, it was completely gone. So this is almost like the lip stain version of a nice tinted lip gloss. Like it's pretty when it's on, it makes your lips look a little bit healthier and more flattering but as soon as you eat, you've got to reapply. So I don't mind that. I think, again, it's different from what I expect from a stain and what I like from a stain, but it doesn't mean it's a bad product. It just means it's different from what I usually reach for. So I'm actually gonna keep this, partly because I want a red and a white on display, um, but also because it is different from what I have in my lip stain collection that I'm keeping. All right, so this BE01 shade, um, I would call this more of a liquid lipstick. It's not a lip stain, I said that before, um, but it's very thin. It almost has like an oil feel to it. Um, so it's very comfortable. It does set down matte. It doesn't last super well, but it does fade down quite nicely. The tone of this nude is also really pretty. It's like a peachy brown nude. It reminds me of like a peachier version of Velvet Teddy, maybe like um, Kinda Sexy, which is a really beautiful uh, lipstick from MAC. I could definitely see myself using this. I just previously haven't reached for it often because I don't think of nude when I think of lip stain, but uh, it is quite pretty. So I'll keep that one as well. Now, as I'm filming this, I remember that I've got more lip stains from other brands. I'm sure I've tried a few from like Pony and a few other ones. I just don't know where they were when I was organizing my lip collection. So what I might do towards the end of this series, after I've gone through all my categories that I've set out, I might do like a filling the gaps or things that got away. And I might revisit products that should have fit into these categories that for some reason I lost or forgot about or didn't include. So I'll have to do that. There might be a couple more stains there. All right, getting on to Tony Moly. Now, uh, I've got five of the original lip tone get it 
tints. So these were pretty well known, um, but I think they've been uh, discontinued since I, from what I was looking up anyway. Um, but these were sort of like the nail polish looking bottles, glass bottles, quite kind of heavy, kind of uh, bulky to store. So the notes I made about the formula of these, I said it's not matte, it's not glossy, it's medium coverage, very thin feeling, a little bit sticky at the start, but does set. Most shades wore really well and faded down quite evenly. One of my pet peeves about stains is when they wear off patchy or they cling to dry areas and you end up having like what looks like, yeah, sections of your lips that are stained and then others that aren't. That just drives me crazy and I didn't get that with these. At the start, these almost have a little bit of a coating, like a lip product on your lips, but once they do stain and they start to fade off, like the lip product starts to fade off and it leaves the stain behind, you might need to go in with something like a lip gloss or a lip balm later in the day um, because essentially you're left with just your lip texture and, you know, a lot of us wear lip balms, a lot of us wear lip glosses because our lips are dry. Um, and if that's like you and you find at the end of the day without any wearing any lip product, your lips feel dry, um, that's what these will leave your lips feeling, but they'll be colored. So I'm gonna run through the shades that I have. Um, and then what I'll do probably towards the end is just tell you which ones I'm keeping and which ones I'm getting rid of. I won't tell you as I talk through them. I'll just describe the shades and how I like them. All right, the first shade that I'm talking about is 02. I don't have 01. In the bottle, it looks like a creme pink nail polish, um, and it looks quite vibrant and really fun and really punchy. Um, but on the lips, it actually was more of a like deeper, I don't know, like a mid-toned sensible pink. It was a lot more muted and darker than what I expected. So it did develop on the lips. This shade did wear very well. So I put it on originally at about 9 a.m. And I have a photo of me here playing with my kid at uh, a 10 to 5. So this did last quite a long time. Um, yeah, that's that shade. Pink, mid-tone pink, lasts quite a long time. But it didn't stay bold and opaque for a long period of time. But it did tint the lips for a long time. Shade number three looks straight up orange red in the bottle, but it did give a pinky corally effect to the lips. This one again, I applied at about 9 a.m. and then uh, at about two o'clock, uh, it was almost completely off my lips. So this for me didn't wear as long as I would like it to. It was a nice color, um, but it's not stainy enough. Shade number four, this looks like a dark red, but this is absolutely Awesome. This is an orange tone red. It is gorgeous. Even though you could see the lips through this a little bit, so it does have that, that jelly effect, um, this was super vibrant. And it did wear quite well, um, but it, the, the effect of it was really, really beautiful. I did find that this range benefits from applying one layer and then maybe an hour or two later applying a second layer then it tends to last all day. But if you just apply it the one time, which is what I was mainly doing when I was testing this, um, they didn't last more than five or six hours. Onto shade number five, it looks like a dark red in the bottle, but this did apply like a nice uh, deep, maybe magenta pink on the lips. Uh, it was really, really pretty and it did last quite a long time. Um, so I have photos here and it's probably about 11 hours wear. Um, so it did fade down as you can see, but again, this is the type of product that um, because it is so thin, it, all it does is stain your lips and then wears off and leaves a tint behind. If you go in and reapply, not only do you refresh the color, but you add more tint, it lasts longer. So yeah, this was a really nice performing pink stain. All right, shade number eight is the last shade I have in this particular range. Um, you can tell that it's an orange. Um, it looks like a creme orange in the bottle, um, but on the lips, it did look like a nice like tangerine orange stain, but it didn't last as long as I sort of wanted. Pretty much by the five hour mark, um, it was almost completely off the lips. And even though that's fine, five hours, including like eating and drinking and whatnot, uh, five hours is pretty good, but I do have other oranges that last longer. So the next range is like the secondary range to the ones I just spoke about. These are also the lip tone, get it, tints, but these are the velvet version. So these have a matte finish. So my notes about the formula of these, I said that these have more of an oilier, almost silicon slip to them when you first apply them. Um, they also have quite a strong fruity perfume to them, which you can sort of taste 
The perfume does eventually dissipate, but it was just something that I kept noticing when I would apply these. They do feel very thin on the lips um, and they give you more, more of that blotted matte finish. So again, I think these, uh, instead of drying down fully matte, they have that sort of silicon vibe to them that gives that matte finish, um, which makes things a little bit more comfortable. You can tell the difference between these and the originals because the originals have clear glass bottles and you can sort of see the liquid inside whereas these have painted metallic bottles. The first shade that I have is 02. I was not a fan of this. Um, this was like an apricot nude orange shade and I've said it once, I'll say it again. Nude shades don't stain. They're not stains. They're just liquid lipsticks. I did also find that this um, formula in general did feel a little bit dry after a few hours but again you can follow it up with a lip balm um, to sort of rehydrate. Shade number three is a really interesting shade. It's like a muted nude red. Now, what I sort of mean by that is imagine having like a bit of red, mixing it with your nude, um, mixing it together, and you sort of get like a dull red or like a reddy nude, if that makes sense. Um, it's pretty, but it didn't last very long, especially through food. Um, and again, this is not the type of red that I usually go for. It's a little bit more muted. All right, shade number four was more of a rosy red shade. Um, again, it didn't wear super well uh, compared to some other shades that I have, um, but it was a pretty sort of uh, corally pink shade. Shade number five was probably the best performing shade out of this bunch. Um, this was a very opaque red. Um, and it lasted super, super well. I have my showers at night. I wash my face, I double cleanse, and this one even lasted through my shower. Another one that pretty much lasted all day was number six. This is more of the orange toned red. So the last one was more of a true red, like a blue toned red. This is the orange tone. Again, lasted like a powerhouse, lasted all day, and pretty much, again, lasted through my shower. Really pretty shade. Shade number seven is a really beautiful sort of bright coral pink. Um, this was a little bit sheerer to apply, but if you laid a couple of coats, you could get it very opaque. Really, really, really pretty color. I really like this color. And you can see in this photo on the screen, that's about five hours wear and I'm in my dressing gown. It's after dinner. It was wearing all day. Shade number eight is like a baby pink color. Again, not a stain. This is like a, a matte version of a blotted lip gloss. Yeah, this is not a stain. It didn't do much to the lips. Does not stain, does not last very long. I don't think it should be in a stain range at all. Now we're getting into the important end of the video. Um, so these are also from Tony Moly and these are like a step up from the ranges I just spoke about. These are the Perfect Lips Shocking Lip Stains and these are the Shocking Lip Blurs. So again, these are matte finish. These are more of that shiny finish. So these are sort of like these ones, the one in the clear packaging, but a lot more intense. Um, and these ones are like the velvets, but a lot more intense. So I didn't try one of these until right at the end of the project and my notes say in capital letters, motherfucking bam, why did I even keep any other lip stains when I have these? These are the best for my lip chemistry anyway. Um, they are so pigmented and it gives the same impact in one coat that others will give in multiple coats. These leave the lips with a bit of a shine and a bit of hydration. So these are a lot glossier finish than um, the other lip stains that I've spoken about. Um, this formula is really interesting because what it does is pretty much you apply the stain, you let it set. And then once it's set, it's almost like the color has stuck to the lips. And then you have this clear, almost, yeah, clear gloss that covers the lips and keeps it hydrated for a few hours. So if you have drier lips, but you want the lip stain effect, these are the ones you want to go for because they do have that hydration, that sort of glossy effect. Once the gloss wears off, you can always go in with a clear lip balm or a clear gloss to sort of um, maintain that hydration and shine. Um, but the, the color is already stained on the lips. One tip with these though is um, they can take a little bit of time to set because they do need to sort of set to the lips and 
do their thing. Um, and in that time, if you're moving your lips around too much, if you're talking, if you're pursing lips together, you can get it on your teeth. So I recommend just putting these on, leave your lips like this for like a minute and then you won't have a problem. But yeah, if you are talking as you've applied these, you can find that you get them on your teeth and you have to be really careful because these stain within seconds. Like if I was to um, put one of these on my hand, for example, I actually swatched all my Tony Molly ones to get like color comparisons. So we've got different ranges there. Um, I did that on paper instead of my hand because um, I know it'd be stained on my hand um, through tonight and well into to tomorrow. So let's just give you an indication all right, I've just got a rag with some micellar water ready to go and I've just got one of these lip stains. I'm just gonna put it on like that. I'm gonna close this and then I'm gonna take that off. And that's already stained. Like in that time, it's already stained. So these are not mucking around, they're serious stains. And pretty much everything else that I've put on my hand tonight which, okay, granted, they were the light ones. They all came off, but that one stayed. So these are not stains for the faint-hearted. You need to like that really bold, opaque stain effect um, to like these. If you do like that sheerer, slight wash, slight, slight little watercolor effect of a stain, these are not for you. Um, however, what you could always do is apply it, wipe it off straight away, and get a subtle effect and put like a lip balm or gloss over the top if you do want to turn these into a more subtle finish. All right, let's just run through the colors. I love them all and I'm just going to tell you I'm keeping them all. There's seven shades available. I have all seven and I love every single one of them. Shade number one is a pink um, and it is more of a blue toned pink. So it's not a coral. It's not um, a red pink. It is more of a fuchsia pink. So I actually wore this when I was painting the house um, and this is a gorgeous gorgeous vibrant color and it did wear all day um, it wore off a slight amount with dinner and then what I did was I applied a lip gloss over the top and bam it looked like it was just a shiny pink again so when the finish of these do wear down you'll still be left with that slightly drier your normal lip feel um, so just put a balm or a gloss like I put a gloss in this little uh, video that I've got and it brought it back to life. It looks gorgeous, wears really, really well. All right, shade number two is a really gorgeous dark red stain. Now, I never thought I'd be able to find one that is as dark as this and also wears as well as this. Um, this is more of a classic true red. And I did find that as this wore throughout the day, it faded down to more of a cherry red instead of a dark red, um, but it was still gorgeous and still lasted a long time. I did find that the outer corners of my mouth um, as I was eating and drinking wore down a little bit, but if you closed your mouth, you, you really couldn't tell. It looked gorgeous, beautiful shade. And yeah, lasted all day. Shade number three is my most used shade. This is an orange tone red. It is gorgeous. It is bright. This doesn't blank out the lips, but it is very, very bright, very bold. Um, I did actually wear this to the doctors getting my final vaccination. Hooray. Um, and I wore it underneath a mask. And after about an hour of wearing it under a mask, you can see there was no transfer on the mask, which was awesome. Um, and again, wore really well throughout the day. This was one that um, I had on until I had a shower, which was great. Shade number four is an orange. This is not an orange toned red. It's like a true, true orange. Um, and when swatched, it looks very like unappealing. It looks almost too yellow orange, like crayon orange, like really obvious orange. Um, so it might look a little bit unappealing swatched um, but I have to say that because it is a sheerer color like it's quite bold but you can see your lips coming through when you do apply it actually ends up looking like more of a vibrant um, let's say red toned orange whereas the last one was an orange toned red so it's predominantly red with orange leanings I would say that this one settles to the lips to look more of an orange with a slight red tint to it so it doesn't look as jarring as it looks swatched, which ultimately makes it a lot more wearable. And again, this wore really well all day. I think I even had this on my lips a little bit the next morning. That's how well it wore. So this next shade, shade number five, looks like it's a peachy apricotty color, but it's more of a warm toned pink. So similar to how this one here is a cool toned pink. So it's got purpley tones to it. 
This is more of a like a coral toned pink. It's very, very, very vibrant, very bold, very gorgeous on the lips. You can see how bold it is first applied. Um, I've also got a video here where you can see that it doesn't transfer. So uh, even though it's super bold and opaque and gorgeous, it really doesn't transfer. And it's great for a toddler because you want to kiss them. You don't leave marks on them. Um, as this does fade down, it starts looking more pink. So you can sort of see it being more of a warmer toned pink throughout the day. Um, but this wears like a powerhouse. This is one of those shades that I had on the next day, like a, just a slight hint of pink. So yeah, really, really don't let the cap fool you. It's not a nude. Look, is this next shade that necessary in the range? Uh, probably not really. This is shade number six. It's one of the newer shades that they've released. I think originally they had the five shades and then they added the six and then they added the seventh. This one is the shade Tomato and it's sort of like if the last one I spoke of and the orange toned red had a baby, it's more like a cherry red. So instead of it looking more pink, corally red, it's yeah, it's more like a neutral bright red. There's orange tones in it, there's pink tones in it, um, and it's just a beautiful vibrant shade. I do think you can probably get a similar effect mixing these two. Um, and you know, the nuances are very slight. It's almost if you just took this one and added just a little bit of orange to it to neutralize it. But yeah, it's a gorgeous shade. Uh, I don't hate it, but um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit redundant. The last shade in this range is number seven. This is more of a blood toned red. We did talk about a dark red before and I'll have a comparison on the screen. Number two is more of your traditional blue toned red. Whereas this number seven, which they're calling Rose, is more of a blood orange toned dark red. So they look kind of similar. They give a similar effect. But one, I've got a photo on the screen as well. So you can see one is just a little bit more blue toned. One is a little bit more orange toned. Being a darker stain, this did sort of fade down a little bit more than the brighter stains, um, but it's still a gorgeous color. And um, the good thing about it is you can get that like really vibrant blood toned red shade without it smearing and moving and um, transferring, which is very hard to find. All right, now onto the last range. These are the shocking uh, lip blurs. So these are Similar concept to the last thing, but just a matte version. And these are the newest stains to come to Tony Molly. There's only five shades available. I do have them all. I'm wearing one of them today. So that's what I've got on my lips. Um, and in theory, these are supposed to be, again, that matte finish, but a more vibrant intensity of color. So what I said about the formula, it's lightweight, almost has a mousse-like texture. So unlike these, which had more of a silicon slip, these have more of a moussey sort of feel to them. Some of these shades can be applied quite sheerly um, to get more of a medium color, or they can be built up a little bit more to get an opaque finish. So to get this opaque finish on one of the lighter shades that I'm wearing today, I did layer it uh, a couple of times. So these do look like your traditional matte liquid lipstick on the lips, but the benefit of them is that since they stain, um, when they start to wear off, you can't really tell because they've stained the lips. So shade number one I'm wearing today, and I have to say at least the packaging of these match the lip color. These don't, these don't, these don't. None of the colors that they indicate match the actual stain. Whereas I feel like these are a lot more accurate. So this shade is more of your corally pink shade. Um, it is quite bright, but it's not as punchy and as pigmented as some of the other shades we've seen here. Shade number two is a similar sort of color to this, but it's more pink and less coral. So it's still that lighter tone of stain. Um, and these two shades being lighter shades, they still stain the lips, but they don't wear super long. So you will start seeing some significant fading at like the four or five hour mark. Shade number three is pretty much my perfect orange tone red stain in a matte finish. This is glorious. I love it. Um, if you love these tones, you will also love this. It is almost perfection. This is one of those shades that looks super perfected and amazing on the lips. Um, and it lasts really well throughout the day. And again, lasts up until past my shower at night. So, um, really beautiful shade. If you like the look of this orange one, but you vibe with more uh, cooler toned reds, number four is what you want to go for. So they're quite similar. 
um, but the tones are just a little bit different. So this one looks like your more traditional sort of uh, pinup matte red lip, which is also gorgeous. And again, this wears beautifully um, throughout the day. All right, the last shade is a very unique one in my opinion. This is shade number five. Um, how do I describe this? I said it's a mid-toned berry burgundy red. I said that this looks more like a shade that you would find in a liquid lipstick and not so much in a stain. It sets down transfer proof like the rest of them um, and it's not super dry. I was surprised at how well this shade wore because I wasn't expecting much from a shade that doesn't have that really vibrant orange or vibrant pink or vibrant red tones to it. This definitely looks more like a burgundy but it still wore really, really nicely. All right, so when I was testing these, uh, when I eventually got around to this range, so that shiny, shocking lip stain, I was like, I can literally get rid of all the other lip stains because this is all I need. These are by far the best and I stand by that. I don't think these matte ones are as good. I think there's only a couple of shades, which are the two red shades that sort of meet the vibrancy and the wear time that these ones have but I like the matte finish of these and they are a really comfortable matte lip product and they look really beautiful and quite uh, vibrant. So even though I don't think these match up to the shocking range, I do like them. I will keep all five of these, but I do have to say that I was most impressed by the darkest three. The two light, um, I don't feel like they it lasts as well as I would like from a stain. I might declutter. Um, the lighter two at the end of this project, but you can't take these away from me. They're gorgeous. You also can't take any of these away from me. All seven shades, even the one that's sort of redundant and you can sort of make by mixing two others, I love them all. I love them all. They're so fantastic. There's not one shade that I dislike and my love for them has just grown and grown and grown and I can just see these being the perfect lip product for a pandemic because they last so well under masks. Just remember all these photos that I've been putting on the screen, whenever I leave my house, I have to wear a mask. So these have all been tested under masks and they all pretty much, well, except for these nasty things that I talked about at the start, I just wore those at home and then removed them when I didn't want to wear them anymore because they were horrible. But all the other ones I have worn under masks and they're fantastic. All right, I'm gonna have to wrap this up really fast because um, firstly, it's midnight. Secondly, I just spent an hour trying to resettle my kid to sleep. <sighs> anyway, so after enough like swatching and re-swatching and checking and rechecking, um, originally when I was going into filming this, I thought I'm going to keep the intense stains, like the whole ranges of them and get rid of the ones in these bottles. But I realized there's a shade in this range that I'm missing in this sort of formula and it's a corally sort of vibrant ready pink. So I've got them in abundance in the glossy, but not in the matte. So I'm going to keep shade number seven um, because that gives that sort of coral bright, fun matte vibe um, that I'm missing in the sort of shocking range. All right. So in terms of things I'm keeping, there's the five shocking lip blurs. There's the seven shocking lip stains. There's the one lip tone get it tint velvet. So those are all by Tony Moly. Then I'm keeping the two Chateau Labiotte wine tints, so the nude and the sort of uh, light pink shade, just for a bit of variety and because they're cute. So I'm still sticking to the 50-50 mark. I was so, sort of hoping to get rid of more, um, but it is what it is. I'm getting rid of 16 and I'm keeping 15. So I've had a great time testing the lip stains. It's reignited my love for lip stains, but it was very difficult because I could only apply one a day and it's like splitting hairs. I'm literally comparing apples to apples, um, which has made it really hard. So um, yeah, that's that. All right, I'll list all the products and the shades that I talked about in order of mention to make it a little bit easier because I know there's a lot of like, oh, ah, zero, one. It was a bit confusing, but if you missed anything, it will all be listed in the description box. And um, I'll also list some of my past videos from this series. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.